Ooh, it's sparkly because it's me, Indiana Jones. Welcome to my channel. If this is your first time here, I hope you enjoy this and I hope you come back for more. And to my friends, thanks for sharing some time with me. Today, I am going off of fall and Halloween and doing something a touch Christmassy. So let's get started. So I was inspired for this chic for cheap challenge to do this Christmas tree top hat that's Mackenzie Childs inspired. So the first thing I need is a waste paper basket from Dollar Tree. It's these wire baskets. These are perfect for this project. Um, if you haven't seen it before, I also made this into a corset. Yes, you heard me right, a corset. No, I did not wear the corset, but it's a corset basket. Why would you need a corset basket? I don't know. Why would you need a Mad Hatter hat? Does it matter? No, it's just for fun. So I just thought it would be cool to have a Mad Hatter's tree topper. Mad Hatter tree topper. Does that make sense? Yeah. So here I am. There you can see that I like warped it as best as I could because, you know, those hats are always like warped on one side, like they have a slant. So I had to create a slant. And the only way you could do that is by cutting and pinching like I'm doing here. So there you go. Because I didn't give you any instructions on the other clip that I just showed you, but oh well. Anyway, now I'm using some very thin EVA foam. I think it's one eighth of an inch thick. And I'm going to glue this foam onto the wire form. And you're like, well, why are you doing that? Well, simple enough. Um, if I put paper or fabric, actually, next time I do this, I want to use fabric instead if I ever find that courtly check fabric. And um, that way you don't see the netting behind it, that, you know, crisscross netting behind the paper or behind the fabric. Besides, it just gives it a nice smooth um, finish. Now I'm gluing the EVA foam straight onto that wire form. And once I'm done with that, then I'm going to have to create a top for the top hat. If that makes any sense. And also uh, a brim. And that's all going to be made with EVA foam a as well. Again, EVA foam is very easy to work with and you can glue it with hot glue perfectly. So for the brim, I made sure I used a bit thicker uh, EVA foam just to make it a little sturdier. Since this will be at the bottom, you're going to be able to see it from the bottom of the tree. And one of the tricks that I use, of course, when using EVA foam is to heat it up to uh, shape it properly. And you'll see that in just a moment. Now I'm going to cover everything in that courtly check paper that you can get at Hobby Lobby. I love it. And while I was creating this, I said, hmm, um, what am I going to do with these seams? Well. I had a workaround and uh, you'll see what I did. I just worked the seam into the actual design and it looks rather nice when you see the end product. So here I am continuing to wrap that paper all around my um, EVA foam covered hat. And as you can see there, what I did was I created a seam, I folded it over and for example, right here, I'm trying to match up the seams and I think I did this perfectly. Thank you very much. Look at that. Look at that. You can't even tell. And then in the front of it, I um, made the seam. You'll see. Uh, I made the seam look like uh, shoelaces or almost like a corseted, corseted area. And uh, I will be threading some ribbon through. There it is. And there I did. I created the top. As you can see, I, I added the top with glue. And now I'm heating up the brim to shape it into that wacky shape, you know that it's like up on the sides and um, just to give it a little debonair kind of look. And the best way to do that with EVA foam is just heat it up a little bit and then shape it and heat it and shape it and heat it and shape it. And it just, it gives it such a nice touch. See, there you go. There it is. Next, because I want to be extra, I could have left the top black, but then I decided it needed a pop of color. and. I didn't realize when I was doing this, this is actually going to be on the top of the tree if you make this a tree topper. So you wouldn't see the top of the hat per se, but you will see it because of a little bit of the slant. But anyway, I just thought it would look cool if it had the red top. Now, again, you can use this as a tree topper for, you know, Christmas. You can even use this for Halloween if you want to do a whole Alice in Wonderland area. And uh, you can use this as a centerpiece. You can even use this as a costume if you cut out the bottom part of the waste paper basket and uh, you can make a hat out of this if you wanted to. 
Um, I don't know if I, I, yeah, I don't think I tried to put this on my head, surprisingly. But there you have it. With the top in red, I put red satin on the top. And now I'm going to continue embellishing it because I thought, okay, it needed a touch of gold, of course. When anything Mackenzie Childs or Alice in Wonderland, a little touch of gold never hurt. I got this at, I believe I got this at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off or it was on clearance because I never buy anything retail price. Never, 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 never. Unless I'm desperate, then yeah, maybe I'll concede. Or I'm buying something from like Amazon or something. So here we are there, it's all trimmed up. Now the next part I really enjoyed doing, which is corseting the side of the hat. So there you go. And all I have to do now is put in some hole punches. And I didn't have smaller hole punches, so I just used regular size, but it was perfect actually. It worked out just fine. So I just hold punched on both sides of the seam, as you'll see in a minute. And um, there I am hole punching for the last few hole punches. And uh, I didn't want to speed this up just because I wanted you to enjoy this part. See how it's all there? And I didn't go all the way down the hat because I realized that I'm going to have a nice big wide ribbon at the brim of the hat. Now here I am lacing up that little corset hat. And I think this is, I love it. I don't know about you. I thought it was a brilliant idea. Uh, it wasn't like this on the original, but I just thought, what a cute idea. Sometimes I wish I had had gold, but I think the red, you know, I was like, should I use gold ribbon or a red ribbon? But I think the red ribbon just stands out so perfectly well and it matches so well with the Alice in Wonderland theme. So I continue to lace up the hat, as you'll see in just a moment. And I finish up lacing up the hat and then I start working on the actual ribbon that's going to be around the brim of the hat. So in my ribbon stash, I found this ribbon and I thought, oh my goodness, how perfect with the white and the polka dots. I just thought this is so fitting and so festive. So I use this as the brim, obviously ma making the brim first or the brim, I don't know what that's called, whatever that ribbon is around the rim, that thing. Yeah, that thing. I made that first and then I added my bow later. So here I am creating the bow and it's just, you know, wrapping around the ribbon. I only did it twice. Usually you do three times. I did it twice and then I cut off the excess to create the little tails. Instead of having the tails directly attached to the bow, I made it separate so that it would be easier to control and manipulate the bow. So here I am cutting off that tail and I'll be adding that tail in just a moment. So here I am. You gotta fluff up the bows. You gotta fluff up the bow. Fluff up the bow. I didn't paint anything today yet. I haven't painted anything. Oh well. Anyway, here's some more black and white ribbon, which I thought again was perfect. If, if I had, even if I had courtly check, I wouldn't use it because the paper's already courtly check. So it's just keeping that black and white motif. And again, a lot of people like this motif. It's a perfect color combination, also for Christmas. And oh gosh, I'm falling in love with this project. I love it. So now I am just going to add the little tails and some more embellishments. I have to say, to see the final reveal in all its glory, you'll have to come back tomorrow and check out another video that I'll have about doing a setting for this wonderful top hat, Alice in Wonderland style. This video is part of the Chic for Cheap Challenge, which is hosted by the lovely Christy of Christy Creates DIY. Christy and I have become very good friends over this past year, and I was thrilled to be her co-host for this challenge this week. Next, I'm going to make some plain card roses. Now, I forgot to add a picture here, but I saw them on Etsy from $7.50 to $12 each. So I thought I'd take a stab at it because I thought this would be a wonderful way to decorate a Christmas tree, Alice in Wonderland style. So the first thing you're going to do is get some a floral wire and take one of your cards, one of the playing cards, and just roll it slowly and tightly around your wire, around your floral wire. If you don't have floral wire, use some floral picks that you've taken off the flowers from and uh, yeah, make use of that. That's what I'm using here actually, one of those floral uh, bouquet picks and I'm just making good use of refuse. That's why it's called refuse, I guess. I don't know. So now I'm cutting a petal shape 
in my first card that I'm going to add. As you can see, I slowed down this process because I didn't want to speed through it too quickly. I didn't want you guys to lose out on any of the steps. So once you have created your petal, make sure to bend back the card to create more of a petally, 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 petally. I don't know, a petal, petal-like petal. Not like a petal, like a bicycle petal, but like a rose petal. So um, P-E-T-A-L, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm fixed on that. And just make it look more like a petal. Same thing here, I'm putting a little notch, a very small notch at the top of these other cards. And again, cutting a like a V shape at the bottom, just so it'll be easier to attach. So here I am again doing the same process where I'm rolling back the tips of the card so it'll have more of a petal look. And not only that, but you also want to be able to see the actual cards. Now these cards, I don't know why they were so like bizarre on the inside. I guess they were easy to read. And as you can see, all I'm going to do now is roll these additional petals around that initial grouping of petals. So I wrapped one card first and then a second card just went around and it was very tightly wound around the initial um, card in the middle. And now it is glue and repeat and glue and repeat and glue and repeat. And then you'll be like, well, is this actually working? But after you put on like the third or fourth petal, you start noticing like, hey, this actually looks pretty neat. And I would say you probably need between, I don't know, I think I used 10 cards, at least 10 cards. And I used the red cards. I had a two pack and I had a, red, a stack of red cards or blue cards. You can use whichever color you like. Um, I also wanted to paint the edges a bit in gold. For now, I just left it like au naturel, but it's also a cute idea if you were to just to dip the little edges or just take a brush and paint the edges gold just to add a little more sparkle or even glitter, whatever you want to add to it. But it is such a cool effect when you all is said and done and it's not that difficult. It doesn't cost any money at all. Just a little bit of time and patience and there you have your playing card rose. And like I said, if you love Alice in Wonderland, you can add this as an addition to your um, to your Christmas tree or any type of decor, even a, a, in a vase. Um, it would just look so pretty. And again, if you have any kind of Alice in Wonderland parties coming up, this would just be such a cute touch at the at the table. You know, in the place setting, it just adds so much to it. So again, I will have a final reveal as I do a setting for World Mad Hatter Day, which is tomorrow, October 6th. And here I'm just adding some leaves at the very bottom just to add a little more authenticity, I suppose, and to finish it off. And you can see what a... I loved it. I just... I saw this. I can't remember who the artist that did it, but I saw it on... Pinterest and Etsy and I said oh I have to try this for my own so I hope you try it as well and if you do share it with me on Instagram this video is part of the chic for cheap challenge which is hosted by the lovely Christy of Christy creates DIY Christy and I have become very good friends over this past year and I was thrilled to be her co-host for this challenge this week Last but not least, I'm going to make some topiary ornaments. Um, you can use them as topiary ornaments or as anything else. And here I am using my handy dandy styrofoam cutter, which is probably kind of noxious kind of fumes that I was breathing in. Don't worry, I had a window that was open and a fan on. And all I'm going to do is cut out a heart and I'm going to use one of those little um, seedling cups that you can get at the Dollar Tree. And here I am just setting up the styrofoam to go inside of the cup and uh, basically I saw these again for anywhere between seven to twelve dollars on Etsy I'll try to get a picture of it but it's basically costing me free because I already had everything but it's not gonna cost you everything you know it's not gonna cost you for free if you don't have everything but I already had the uh, Mackenzie Child's paper I already had the styrofoam I already had the seedlings and the seedling um, pot and I already had moss and you know how much I love moss 
but somehow I always end up working with it, right? So here I am just gluing on the moss as fast as I can to the little heart. Because in Alice in Wonderland, there were like little topiaries and stuff in the, in the Queen's Garden. Besides, I think it's cute. And uh, I think this is adorable for Christmas if you want to add an ornament to your tree. Creating these, you can make smaller and bigger um, uh, topiaries. And uh, again, because it's Alice in Wonderland inspired, if you can have an Alice in Wonderland inspired tree, uh, put a tree on a tree. It's a tree inception, uh, topiary inside of a Christmas tree. But it looks so cute. It looks so cute. And I kept it very basic and simple. You can add all the embellishments you want. But um, here I am again. You have to add gold. If you're going to do anything for Christmas, you got to have a little bit of sparkle. So here I'm adding some gold trim. And then I'm going to make a little, you know, those little potion bottles that are out right now. I took a little potion bottle and I made it into like a drink me, eat me kind of thing. I put some glitter, gold glitter, of course, gold glitter inside. And I put it right there at the, at the base of the topiary tree. Again, this is a lot of fun because you can embellish this with whatever you'd like, with pearls and sparkles and spangles and glitter, whatever you'd like. But I'm just going to keep it simple just to keep you inspired. Again, if you'd like to see the final reveal of all of these items put together in an Alice in Wonderland themed tea to celebrate Mad Hatter's Day, please come back tomorrow for the final reveal. Once again, I want to thank Christy for asking me to co-host this Chic for Cheap challenge. Please check out the rest of the playlist for some more wonderful inspirations. And thank you for always inspiring me to do something a little more and a little more out of the box each time. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if so, please like, share, and subscribe. As I always say, stay safe, be kind. God bless each and every one of you. And remember to live the adventures and come back for tomorrow's big reveal.